few weeks ago, uh, the pastor uh, asked me to, to speak today because he's speaking up at the uh, Spanish church today. And the Lord just started putting some things on my heart. And as we uh, look at this coming year, we wonder what this year is going to bring. You ever think about that? This past year has been so tumultuous, so unexpected, so in a way uh, scary that we wonder what could happen next. We don't know, but I, I do know one thing, that God knows what this next year is going to bring, and he will provide for us and help us through these trials and these difficult times. I was thinking about what can we do to uh, protect ourselves, to maybe boost our immunity, and so I thought we'd begin with a little health nugget and just to review some of the things that we've already been told before, but it's always good to review a few things that will help us to be healthier and to build our immune system. Uh, this past few weeks, uh, I've been working a little more than I usually do because Dr. Peterson moved to Washington State, and so I'm seeing a lot of his, his patients, and so I've been feeling tired and a little run down this past week and so I had to get more rest and drink more water and start taking some vitamins and start reviewing what are some of the things that, that keeps us healthy. And uh, we have a New Start program that we've heard about through Weimar and other t teachers and it talks about the importance of the physical and mental benefits <clears throat> of things that we can do to be healthy. And the acronym is New Start. How many can tell me what the what the letter N stands for? N. What does that stand for? Nutrition. Nutrition. <clears throat> Nutrition is so important when it comes to your health. Uh, T. Colin Campbell, who wrote the China study, says that nutrition is the master key to human health. Nutrition is the master key. What's a master key? Well, if you have a master key, you can use that key in anything. And in your, in your body, the master key can open your cells and give you the nutrition you need to be healthy. He also did studies to show that you can turn on and turn off cancer just by nutrition. He used the casein protein in milk. He added that to laboratory rats and the cancer grew took away the casein, the cancer shrank. And then all, there was also a hospital in Japan that used this on humans and it worked the same way. So certain proteins can stimulate tumor growth and certain proteins can take it away. And so that was a very interesting study that, that he did. Excuse me. Dr. Esseltine, a noted, a noted uh, neuro, uh, heart surgeon, was doing a lot of bypasses. And you see, you see that people were not getting better. You could save them through a bypass, but unless they changed their diet, they were not getting better. And so he started a group of people that couldn't have surgery due to other medical problems and did a trial basis with them. And by just going to whole foods and better diet and exercise and things we'll be talking about, they reversed their coronary heart disease and they showed it on the electrocardiograms how the heart was getting better. So nutrition is so important. Also our foods, our choice of foods, whether it's, is, there, is it GMO, is it organic, is it healthy? I praise the Lord that Matt has the organic uh, working up there so that we, we don't have chemicals that are harmful. And so enjoying the, the fresh organic fruit and vegetables are, are so important. <clears throat> uh, when Dr. Peterson joined my practice about 10 years ago, uh, he was excited to try out the different restaurants, and so he and his wife would go out all over San Luis Obispo County, and they went to places I'd never heard of before. And uh, he would, he would uh, uh, try all these out and talk about the different restaurants. And uh, sometimes he would get sick from, from what he ate. And one time, uh, <laughs> our own experience, he went to a Thai restaurant in Atascadero, which is now closed. But uh, we went there for lunch, and I, I got a, a tofu, uh, vegetable dish, and uh, and then he had uh, a, a, a Thai a curry chicken. Now, chicken's a clean food, right? There's nothing wrong with chicken. And so uh, 
he decided to need to have a, some chicken with his, his meal. And I looked at it and I'm going, well, it looks kind of green. And, you know, it has that green sauce on it. I saw his teeth and I thought, he's going to eat that green chicken, really? Because <laughs> I'm, I'm usually I'm a vegetarian. And so uh, I was giving a little bit of a little rough time there for him. Well, that night, he got food poisoning and spent the night in the hospital because uh, that chicken was not very good. And so uh, what we eat can have a big effect. And by eating vegetables, we are actually eating a healthier, a healthier diet. <clears throat> What's the E stand for a new start? What does the E stand for? Exercise. All right. Exercise is so important. Dr. Neil Nedley, he has uh, some YouTubes you can go to, just uh, Google on, U on uh, YouTube, uh, Dr. Neil Nedley or Weimar, and you can see his talks, and they have a symposium with different doctors talking about how to prevent uh, the COVID virus in a natural way. What can we do to boost our immune system? And exercise is one of those things that really does help. It helps your, your mental health, helps your bone density, helps your muscles be in tone, and helps circulation. So uh, there are so many things we can do. Getting outside, getting fresh air. Uh, I, I uh, can tell a big difference when you're inside. And one of the problems with being in a, in a closed, shut down environment with COVID, we're inside, breathing inside air. We're not outside getting fresh air. When you exercise, you breathe deeply. And so there are a lot of benefits of, of getting that, that exercise. What about uh, the W? What does W stand for? Water. water. We need to drink water. How many remember Pastor Gary Strunk? Remember Gary Strunk? All right. Now, Gary <coughs> would talk about water, and he would talk about water for the benefits on the inside and the outside. And so the inside benefits, he would recommend drinking a, almost a quart of pretty warm water, almost hot, but you want to be able to drink it quickly. He says, first thing in the morning, you want to hydrate your body, warm it up, lubricate those joints, and get your digestive system moving. And so he recommended that. How many have done that? How many still do that? I still do it. I, it's great. I, I, I'm thirsty in the morning. It really helps a lot. And then he talked about water on the outside, using ice treatments, hot and cold, fomentations, uh, so important. And uh, how about that cold shower, that ending that warm shower with cold? How many have done that? How many still do it? I did it for a while, and then, <gasps> this time of year it's so cold. I don't see Don Heist, but he still does it, and he swears by it. Uh, he really likes that. It just kind of uh, stimulates you, works, wakes you up, and it just is a big, big help. A lot more things about water. We don't have time today. How about S? What does S stand for? Sunlight. Okay. Dr. Nedley also talks about the benefits of sunlight. Right now, we're getting vitamin D. We are out in the sun, and vitamin D really helps our immune system. It helps fight off the COVID virus. And so sunlight is so important. And then also he, he has a, uh, uh, a study on the effects of uh, sunlight and mental depression. So if you are feeling depressed, getting outside, getting that sunlight, getting that vitamin D will help you be less anxious, will help you feel better. So that's so important to have that sunlight. Okay, T, what does T stand for? Temperance, okay, let's go with temperance. Temperance, uh, let's just talk about uh, as being self-control, quantity versus quality. Uh, you ever seen that picture of a bowl of, uh, of M&Ms and a bowl of broccoli? Uh, you, <clears throat> the, you can have the same amount of calories, but one fills you up and one you're still going for more. And it, it's just empty calories, so the value of self-control, not eating too much, and you can eat too much of a good thing. Uh, even water, there is like these uh, these uh, fundraisers. They'll say who could drink the most water, and it's been very serious. You can die from drinking too much water. You lose your electrolytes. You get your balance out of balance. So drinking too much is not good. But most of us are dehydrated. We don't drink enough. And so we need to have that good six to eight glasses of water or more, depending on your, your, your weight. But that's so important. 
Okay, moving right along, uh, how about A? What does A stand for? Fresh air, we're getting fresh air right now, and it's important to have that clean air. We're so fortunate to live here. If you're down in the city where there's a lot of smog and uh, noise, you know, that's in the air too. Uh, noise pollution, air pollution, we're, we, it's so important to have that fresh air. Uh, what does R stand for? Rest. Rest. Uh, Dr. Nedley was talking about this as well. Uh, many times we're kind of addicted looking at our smartphones and we're, we're reading on here, we're looking at our email, we're looking at uh, text or, or, or a video or some program, checking the news. <clears throat> reading that blue light before bedtime will, will damage your sleeping ability. You won't be able to sleep as soundly. It'll be harder to go to sleep. And so by avoiding the, the blue light from television or from your iPad before bedtime is really important. Turn that off a few hours before bedtime, you'll sleep much better. And then, uh, I can't read my writing, I should have typed this out. <clears throat> but uh, a light meal. So if you eat a large meal before bedtime you will not sleep as well so having a light meal a couple hours before bedtime uh, pastor strunk and look at his nugs have some toast a little bit of fruit a couple hours before bedtime is, is okay if you have a big meal it should be about four or five hours before you go to bed and what he would do he'd have a two meal program and many of you are working you, you you're not you can't pick your hours to eat so, so easily. But if you're retired and you have a flexible schedule, eating two meals a day at 10 a.m. and then maybe three or four p.m., by bedtime, your, your stomach's empty, you'll sleep much better, have more energy, wake up refreshed. And so not eating a big meal before bedtime. And also in my office, I see a lot of people with uh, acid reflux uh, damage to their teeth. <clears throat> so if you're eating a, a large meal before bedtime, you tend to have more acid reflux and it pits the chewing surface of your teeth. They can make a hole uh, on the top of your teeth from just acid reflux because you're sleeping on your side, you get a little bit of reflux coming up and it pools on the top of the teeth and it makes a pit or a hole. It's not soft decay, it's actually hard. There's a hole in your tube and it just gets deeper and deeper and I uh, saw a patient I think it was just a couple days ago. Uh, she had GERDs and she was like 12 or 13 back molars like enamel it's just eroded off really bad and so she's had surgery and lots of things going on for her stomach but the, the acid in your stomach can really damage not only your teeth but your esophagus uh, can cause even throat cancer so uh, eating, eating uh, properly at the right times is so important <clears throat> so that is the the physical and the mental part of new start but I want to talk today about the spiritual aspects of New Start. And as we look at the letter N, nutrition, we look at some scriptures in the Bible as to what talks about nutrition in the Word of God from a spiritual point of view. Remember the Lord's Prayer? <laughs> Give us thou the daily bread. It talks about the daily bread. Who is, the, who is the bread of life? It's Jesus. You need that daily bread, that feeding of the manna every day. In Exodus chapter uh, 16, it talks about that. If you have your Bibles, you can turn with me to Exodus chapter 16. This is uh, actually before the Ten Commandments were given on Mount Sinai. <laughs> And already the Lord is teaching them or reminding them about the Sabbath. Exodus chapter 16. And I'm going to begin with uh, verses 1 to 4. And they journeyed from Elam, and all the congregation of the children of Israel came to the wilderness of Sin, which is between Elam and Sinai, on the fifteenth day of the second month, as they departed from the land of Egypt. And then the whole congregation of the children of Israel complained against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. 
And the children of Israel said to them, Oh, that we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt. But we sat by the pots of meat, and we ate bread to the full. And you have brought us out into this wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. Here's about a million people. God just saved them from the army of the Egyptians. They passed through the Red Sea, saved their lives, killed their enemies that were going to kill them. And now this million people don't have restaurants. They don't have food. They don't have grocery stores. They probably ate a lot of their food already. There's no water. And they start to worry and murmur and complain. And, and uh, you know, frankly, I would be a, a little bit concerned myself, too. Wouldn't you be a little bit concerned? You look around, see a million people, and there's, how are we going to eat? How are we going to live with, without water and everything? And so they start complaining, and, and they were really angry by, what, by these words that they said to Moses. And then verse 4 says, The Lord said to Moses, Behold, I will rain bread from heaven for you. And the people shall go out and gather a certain quota every day, that I may test them whether they will walk in my law or not. And then it goes on to talk about the manna falling down every morning, six days a week. On, this, on Friday, it would be a double portion. On Sabbath, the manna wouldn't come down. He didn't want them to work on the Sabbath. Take a little extra, prepare for it on, the, on Friday. And then... The funny thing was, the manna would not spoil Friday night. It would still be fresh on Sabbath. But before, if you try to take too much and keep it, it would spoil the next day, and there would be like uh, maggots and, and just the smell. So it was just a miracle every week, a miracle Sabbath, a miracle Friday night, every time. And the Sabbath, you know, begins on Friday night at sundown. And so instead of the food spoiling Friday night, it was kept fresh all the way to Sabbath. The daily manna. You know, as, as we had the daily manna as spiritually, as we read the word of God throughout the week, we get that extra blessing on Sabbath when we share with one another. Amen. <clears throat> Going back to uh, the previous chapter, verse 15 and verse 26 it says if you diligently heed the voice of the lord your god and do what is right in his sight and give ear to his commandments and keep all his statutes i will put none of the diseases on you which i have brought upon the egyptians for i am the lord who what heals you the lord is the one who heals you so if you're sick does it make sense to pray to the Lord that he, that he would heal you? Because he is the Lord who heals you. That is what he, he does. And it's also interesting that he chose to test the people with food. Now, did the Lord ever do that before? Or is this the first time he tested somebody with food? How about Adam and Eve, Adam and Eve in the garden? He tested them with food. You know, food seems like a, a, a little thing, but try fasting for a few hours. <laughs> it can be a very big thing when you're hungry, and choosing the right food, eating at the right time, does require, I think, in my case, supernatural help. Supernatural help. I don't have that kind of self-control where I can go without eating for a few days, just drink water. I know some can do it and done very well, but if when your stomach starts growling really loud and you start feeling kind of shaky, it's just like, there must be another way to fast. I'll, just, I'll give up something else <clears throat> except food. And, and that's, that's possible. You can't do a fast without food. You can fast from watching TV or maybe listening to some music or, or whatever it is you want to give up for the Lord. There are other ways to fast. And I, I remember uh, that evangelist that came to our church, uh, he's Hungarian or something, I can't think of his name right now, but, but he has to eat every two hours, every three. He eats a little bit, but he, he doesn't fast with food. But he's a prayer warrior, he'll spend all night in prayer. And the uh, Lord does amazing things with him. So there are different ways of fasting. So spiritually, uh, food, the manna, 
we could have a blessing with that. Also, the Bible talks about food in a different way that we may not expect. It has to do with the new covenant. The new covenant. Let's look at uh, the Lord's Supper and the book of Luke, the New Testament, chapter 22. So, the New Testament. Luke 22, and uh, let's look at um, let's look at verse 19 and 20. <clears throat> it's the Lord's Supper, and he took bread and gave thanks and broke it and gave it to them, saying, "This is my body." He's saying that this bread that is broken before you, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And likewise, he also took the cup after the supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you. This cup is the new covenant. Now, what does the word new covenant bring to your mind? Some other verse, maybe in the New Testament. There's a new covenant that, that God talks about in, an, in, the, in the New Testament. Paul writes about it, and it's found in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 10. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 10. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 10. <clears throat> By that will we have been sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. And every priest stands ministering daily and offering repeatedly the same sacrifices, which can never take away sins. But this man, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down at the right hand of God, and from that time waiting till his enemies are made his footstool. So since Jesus died on the cross and was resurrected, it's been almost 2,000 years. He was uh, baptized around A.D. 27. And what's 2,000 years later? 2027. So just in a few years, we'll have a 2,000-year anniversary of his, his uh, baptism. Interesting to think about, isn't it? And when you add up the thousands of years, you know, and Peter it says, the day of the Lord is like a thousand years when you go through the genealogies in the bible which by the way i just love the way the kids and the, and the big walk around you know doing the, the genealogies wasn't that awesome they did for the program i love that i never enjoyed the genealogies that they get so much that was fantastic well if you add up those years it comes to you know totally about 2,000 years before the flood, a couple thousand years after the flood. And now it's been almost 2,000 years uh, since Christ was baptized. We have about 6,000 years or, or six days for the Lord as a thousand years. And then what comes next? It comes the Sabbath. And then Revelation talks about how there is going to be a Sabbath rest, a thousand-year millennium where the earth will be at rest. Lord, I believe this Lord is coming soon. I, I think we are ne getting near that time where this earth is going to have that thousand-year millennium. All right, so continuing on in verse 14, For by one offering he has perfected forever those who are being sanctified. But the Holy Spirit also witnesses to us, for after he had said before, This is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, says the Lord. I will put my laws into their hearts, and in their minds I will write them. And then he adds, Their sins and their lawless deeds I will remember no more. <clears throat> this is an awesome promise. This is a promise that we can claim for ourselves, but we have a hard time overcoming temptations. We can say, Lord, you've made a new covenant. you promised to put that law in my heart and in my mind. You'll give me the, the desire to keep your commandments. 
and in my mind I will be able to choose to keep your commandments, your statutes. And we can claim this promise. We can claim this over our children, or our friends, those that we are praying for. This covenant is something that is going to save us, is going to work with us, because we need supernatural power. I don't have strength to keep the commandments of God perfectly. And I, I don't think there's anyone here that does. But when Jesus lives within us, does he have the power to overcome sin? Does Jesus have the victory over sin? Of course he does. And so if the Holy Spirit lives within us with all his power, then he can keep the commandments and have the statutes of God. This is the new covenant in a very simple form. He can live within us. If, uh, if Nicodemus, a leader in Israel, needed to be born again, do you think we need to be born again too? Yes, we do. We need that born again experience. And it's not just a singular time. It is something that we need to do every day, asking, Lord, give me your Holy Spirit. Help me to be born again. I need your supernatural power to live. Let's look at the letter E, exercise. How do we look at a spiritual application of exercise? So if you exercise your faith, what are you doing? You're sharing your faith. If you exercise your faith in the Word of God, you are studying the Word of God. This morning we heard a couple of testimonies. That was an exercise of a testimony. That is awesome. That's what it means. And also during your day when you are walking with the Lord, you're helping other people sharing with them, just being good to them, you are actually walking with the Lord and exercising your faith. How about W? Water. What are the spiritual applications of water? Of course, we have baptism. Baptism is a symbol of dying to self and being raised in Jesus. It means being cleansed. And there is a, a text that I, I love in the Old Testament in Ezekiel chapter 36. Ezekiel chapter 36. Let's go back to Ezekiel. Just before Daniel. Ezekiel 36. Ezekiel 36. <clears throat> And in verse 25, it says, And then I will sprinkle clean water on you, and you shall be clean. I will cleanse you from all your filthiness and from all your idols. And I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit within you. I will take the heart of stone out of your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes. And you will keep my judgments and do them. How do we do that? Because His Spirit is within us. Now what if we have problems in our life? Do you think, do you think they could be idols that God was talking about here? If we have an addiction, would that be an idol that He could wash away from us? Or a bad habit? He wants to cleanse us from the filthiness of our old sinful self, that evil nature. And he wants to give us a new heart. I used to think that the sprinkling, well, is that talking about sprinkling baptism? Is that a, a sprinkle of baptism? I think it's more, it's more like a shower of just washing the, the dirt off your body. When I was a child, we used to play in the irrigation ditch up in the Walla Walla at my grandfather's house. They had a, a big orchard and they had an irrigation ditch and he would uh, use the water and he would cut little channels to feed the uh, the, the water to the fruit trees and as kids we would jump in the irrigation ditch it was muddy it was, but it was the only place to cool off there's no pools around there and so we would be in the irrigation ditch and we'd come out and uh, my, my mother took a picture of us and all three of us kids were just mud and all up and down the whole body is covered with mud and they had to hose us down with a hose and that was uh, <laughs> What an experience, how dirty we can get. Well, no matter how filthy we are in our sins, Jesus can hose it off, amen? He can do that. <clears throat> S stands for sunlight. Jesus is the light of the world. 
In John chapter 1, it talks about the true light. He is the, the light uh, of the world. It says that in him was life, and the life was the light of men, and the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. Jesus is the light. If you open your heart, you can comprehend his light. You're open to him. You can hide from the light, but uh, he is always shining to come into your heart. T stands for temperance or self-control. We've talked a little about how we need to have God's control. I don't have self-control, but God has control. So if I give my heart to him, then it's his control, God's control in my life. We must be born again every day. Air, spiritual application of air. Jesus breathed on his disciples the Holy Spirit. Remember that text talking about the disciples? I believe it was just near the time that before he was resurrected, before Pentecost, he actually breathed on them the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the breath that we need, the breath of life, and we can pray every day, Lord, breathe upon me, your Holy Spirit. There's actually a song that we sing about, about that. Rest, the Sabbath day rest. What a blessed day it is for us to have rest to worship, to fellowship. The rest uh, of creation was given on the seventh day of creation, so we are blessed to have a day of rest. We can work too much. We can try to accomplish so many things, working seven days a week, but it's not good for our health, it's not good for our family. And if you can gain the whole world and lose your soul, what good is it? Take a day with the Lord, take a day of rest. Take a day with your family, enjoy nature, be outdoors, enjoy Him. And then trust. I want to close with Psalms 91. Psalms 91. One of the most powerful and most encouraging chapters in the Bible. In this day and age, I think this is a, uh, a chapter that we could put to our memories because there may be times we don't have the Word of God, we may be worried about something. We can always go to Psalms 91. For he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God in Him I will trust. Surely He will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. From COVID-19, He can deliver you from that. He shall cover you with His feathers and under his wings you shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and your buckler. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor of the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence, the diseases, the viruses that walks in darkness, nor the destruction that lays waste at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side and 10,000 at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Only with your eyes shall you look and see the reward of the wicked, because you have made the Lord, who is my refuge, even the Most High, your dwelling place. No evil shall befall, befall you, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling, for he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. Let us pray. <clears throat> Dear Father in heaven, we are so encouraged by the, the word of God, the bread of life, the supernatural power of the Holy Spirit that inspired these words. We ask that power to come inside us and to live within us. We ask for your protection. We ask for your health. We ask that you will protect us from diseases, that you will keep this COVID-19 virus aloof from us, away from us. And as we do our best to be healthy, we ask that you will bless the food that we eat. Bless the water, the air, the exercise. Bless the Word of God that we go into the Word of God and receive encouragement, the blessings to trust in the Word. And whether or not we get sick, whether or not we are laid to rest, we know that you have eternal life for us. You know what is best. And so, Father, we put our trust in you. For we know that in the end, when this 
great book that talks about the holy city and the new earth, where there will be no sickness, no disease. And so, Father, we pray for that salvation for ourselves, for our church family, for our community, for our children, our grandchildren. We pray in Jesus' name.